Today, we're gonna to talk about two specific things that you should very much so understand and consider not doing with Facebook because it can ultimately just lead to your account getting disabled, which sounds simple, but it's really just a mess and a complete web of issues. Now, before we jump inside of my computer and go through this, I wanna let you know we have a case study coming out soon. We've already done a partial case study on this. Another new client doing over $150,000 in the first month and a half inside of our advertising agency. It was someone who came to us doing a couple hundred bucks a day in sales, didn't really know too much about Facebook ads, didn't know, you know how to set up a real processor and how to secure their ad account. So we did all that stuff. We took it over through our full management service. So just a quick heads up right now, we're gonna be doing a $100 off this entire week inside of our advertising agency. It's really not a big deal. People know that we only charge our at cost price for the retainer. So if you're not familiar, we have two different things we do, either partial management, which is where we just completely automate and manage the Facebook ads, or full management, which is where we kind of do everything, like 95% of stuff inside of an e-commerce business, either starting from scratch or scaling. And the retainer that we charge is just our attempt as an agency to cover the cost from our 14 different media buyers, covering the client managers, people who help with optimizing, you know, the brokers for the payment processors and suppliers, all that stuff and the systems that we have. So we're gonna you know, eat another little 100 bucks out of our profit there, which are out of our cost, which is totally fine because as you guys know, we structure it where we don't make money until you do. Okay, it's just as simple as that because we take a percentage of the profits. So when a client's doing $30,000 a day with $10,000 in profit and we're taking you know 30% of that, that's $100,000 a month for our company, right? And that can go back to make up anything. So I always like to be super transparent about how we structure the company as well as everything inside of it from a client perspective while still keeping their stuff private if they request it. So you'll see that case study soon. Make sure to book an absolutely free call using the top link in the description if you wanna ask any questions about our agency and get a little bit more information. That's the only entry point for it. You have to speak with the client manager directly. All right, let's jump right inside of here. Number one, duplicating others. There's two sides to duplicating. Duplicating your ads, which is something you should be cautious with doing too much of on a new ad account. A lot of duplicates will usually get you banned, which sucks, it's weird, but it is what it is. Now, I wanna talk about duplicating others, meaning other people. I've been seeing a lot of people do this. I, I haven't really seen many people do this for a while, but it's back and it's back in style hard. So. This is uh, something you wanna be cautious of because the copycat gets slapped. Well, I didn't even spell this right. The copycat gets slapped nowadays. Now, who, <laughs> whoever you copy can slap you. And what I mean by this, if you go, and this is literally, I'll, I'll show this right here. You can Google Facebook video downloader, put in the link to an ad that you found, download it, and then you just copy paste their ad copy, remake their whole website as your own. People do this all the time. How do I know this? I'm not just guessing. It's because my company, my main brand, we've sent out hundreds of cease and desists. We're that big, I don't think we're that big, but we're that big to the point where people constantly copy us. The biggest way that we find out is because we see ads with some real ad spend behind it where people literally download our exact video, they put their logo over ours, now we watermark our video, so it makes it a little bit tough, but people try with their editing skills. So they'll do that, they'll maybe rework our ad copy at most, they copy the website to a T, so I click the link, I go to the site, it's the exact same. So the easiest point for us is having Shopify shut down their store, that's a really easy cease and desist to send out, but we also file with Facebook in attempts to get that shut down because they're copying us. Now, a few points to think about on this, okay? So. Not only can they get that shut down, but Facebook's automated system can detect it if you copy things exactly. So I'm totally one who recommends ideas and inspiration from others, right? Look at what's working, build off of that. Why would you need to reinvent the wheel? I mean, unless you're trying to be Elon Musk and there's something crazy you wanna do, which is fine. But from an e-commerce perspective, just, just kind of look at what's working and, and mimic that. Do it in a different way, don't copy them. But again, you wanna be careful. So if you're copying and pasting things exactly, you turn around and launch it, what do you think's gonna happen, okay? There's almost a 0% chance that it will ever outperform their original ad. Like, why would it? It's almost impossible. Let alone stay active and running for long. Now, about 95% of the time, the ad won't get rejected. The entire ad account will just go down because they know what you're doing. And what you're doing is against Facebook's policies. So they've been setting up more and more things. I've just been seeing more people do this than I ever have before. And I also see Facebook getting a lot stricter. So I only say this to protect your ad account. The reason that matters, oh, well, my ad account goes down, I'll just re-enable it and submit a request or open a new one. Unfortunately, with Facebook, it's not that simple. If you're an experienced advertiser, you know that. So it just, it is what it is. Don't duplicate others, which basically comes back to don't be lazy. Don't be a little dweeb. Just do your work, take ideas, take inspiration, rework stuff if you want to, find similar products. But again, you don't need to copy people. That's it's never a long-term strategy, ever, okay? Number two, 
the travel login. Gotten a good amount of questions about this recently, so I just wanted to touch on it. I learned this the hard way, and this costed me a couple hundred thousand dollars. When I first was making good money for a year and a half, two years, um, you know, I was 17 years old, I was doing really well, I'd moved to California, got a little spot on the beach. I decided to go overseas with some friends for who knows how long. We just booked it one month at a time. We planned for at least three to six months. So we go to, you know, where do we go? China. We met up with a bunch of manufacturers, which was super cool. Went there for a while. Went to Bali for a month, Thailand for a month, checked out France, went to Amsterdam, went to Prague in the Czech Republic, uh, went to go check out Split in Croatia, all these cool islands. Like it was amazing. It was my first time going overseas. Awesome experience. You want to know what killed the entire experience? Like literally made it very hard to enjoy. Day one of landing in Bali, and this is where it costed me a few hundred thousand dollars. Like it kind of upsets me as I talk about this. Day one, day one of getting to my villa in Bali, I open my computer, literally whoop, open it up, everything shut down. All my ad accounts are down. And at the time, it was just my one main store. And I had a second little store that I would do little influencer shout outs with and stuff, but I wasn't amazing with influencers. You know, my personal expenses at that point in life were less than they are now. I don't want to say it was like was low because I mean, in perspective, I was, I was spending like, you know, six to eight thousand dollars a month. At the time, I had a videographer traveling with me for the six months, paying for all their expenses. And you know, I had money. It wasn't like a, a, an issue. But my primary income stream, which was my main e-commerce store at the time, was completely gone the first day. And I had already booked, you know, 30 days in Bali and then 30 days in Thailand. So like it was already I was there and it was really hard to enjoy. And it took me weeks, probably three to four weeks the entire trip in Bali, I never went to a one waterfall. I went to the beach one time. Like I barely did anything because I was just scrambling to try to get new ad accounts, try and reset stuff up and get it to the point where it was, which was making me a you thousand know, to two thousand dollars a day. So it was it was tough. It, it was tough to deal with that and swallow that pill because I didn't know like why would that happen? And the reason they took me down is because they said that I got hacked because someone logged in overseas. And it was the dumbest thing. I submitted the verification. I submitted my ID. I submitted a photo of myself, the security code that they asked for, everything. And I just never heard back. I lost my entire personal page on Facebook. I had a, a Facebook group back then, bigger than any other entrepreneur group on Facebook. It was 80,000 people in the e-commerce space. This is 20, early 2018. This is three years ago, over three years ago. Huge Facebook group. We were posting value. I had moderators and there. It was awesome. And I just lost it all. So it is what it is, but I learned that the hard way, okay? And over time, I've had more and more issues. Now, just to touch on it, if you're traveling, VPNs are an option. I would never use it personally because they're unreliable. As I was on that first trip, I tried to use VPNs. And I, you know, we can go way more in depth. It'll be a five-hour video to actually talk about this. We talk about this in our programs, by the way. That's, that's why they're there. People ask why they're there. Can't sit down and talk about something for eight hours on YouTube. Nonetheless, VPNs are an option, but they fluctuate, they disconnect. And that was the problem that I had when I was trying to use those. So two options, I've used both of these, Amazon AWS and Google Cloud Server. Google Cloud Server is really annoying if you are a Mac user, okay, Mac iOS. Reason for that, it makes you download a whole parallel program which runs everything in Windows. I'm not a Windows fan, I'm not familiar with that. So it was like opening up a whole portal and it was structured as Windows and it was really annoying. But nonetheless, for another trip, I went on another two month trip. I did Bali for another two weeks. I did Thailand for a week, Switzerland, uh, Paris, Monaco, and anyways, all these locations. And I was completely secure because I only logged in on Google Cloud Server. Now keep in mind, before I left, I had set up the Google Cloud Server, I don't know what it was, like 400 bucks a month for the level of data and whatever that I needed. And that was like more than enough, like you could probably do it for 100 bucks. But I had that and I was logging in, running ads before I left. So on my same Wi-Fi address, same IP. So everything was like structured there. And you can get way more in depth. The next time I traveled after that, I had servers. And we were, we were teleporting or whatever you call it, teleconnecting into these servers through TeamViewer for Mac iOS devices. They were already logged on, plugged in, running 100% of the time, like ready for us to use while we were connecting from overseas. And we had someone who could help with any issues at that office if there was a problem. So like you can go to extreme lengths with it, but the, the ultimate here, the ultimate thing here, if you're traveling, be very careful if you're an advertiser because I promise you, it is not worth it as an advertiser to have everything go down when you travel. I would rather just not take the trip. And if I would have known that that would have happened, 
I wouldn't have gone. But there's always got to be a solution because you want to travel. Especially if you run an online business, you should be able to work on the beach. I literally have done what you see in photos, like working on the beach for six hours in a lounge chair while some cute Balinese girl is bringing you mojitos or whatever. I don't, I don't drink, but they bring you drinks, they bring you food. Like It's literally as described, not all the time, but like you can actually do that and you want to take advantage of it here and there. So you should have the ability to travel. Here's how you do that. I just wanted to talk about it. If you have any questions, if you're an active traveler or digital nomad as they call it, um, leave it in the comment section down below if you have any issues with your Facebook ad account. I'm no expert, I guess. Some people think I am. I, I've gone through these issues. I've dealt with solutions. My solutions might not be the best. Again, I've lost hundreds of thousands of dollars in just lost revenue, way more than that if you actually factor in lost profit. But, uh, you know, like just indirect things that have costed me a lot of money, you know, like money that I've missed out on, the, the $65,000 I had originally spent um, a little over a year ago trying to set up servers, set up ad account infrastructures and all these different things with dozens of profiles so that I couldn't go down, different things like that. So I've experimented with a lot of stuff to try and figure it out. And this is just kind of a slight overview of that. So if you're traveling, be careful. That's basically the summary here. And don't duplicate others. Don't be lazy. So those are two things with Facebook. Again, be sure to book a free call uh, with the link down below, top link in the description with our advertising agency. We help you structure all the stuff. We automate your Facebook ads for you, meaning we run it. It's not just some computer AI. We're not that good or that cool, but you know, we run it. We have our team of 14 different media buyers. We can help you start from scratch, get something working, or scale something aggressively. We have clients who come to us doing half a million dollars a month because they want to scale. They know the potential. They just don't know how to do it. You know, I always say it's more annoying and more work to get things off the ground. And you know, especially as an agency, a lot of our clients are just starting things off the ground. It truly is a pain in the ass. We're willing to do it though, because when things are being ready to be scaled. It's doing 200,000 a month and we're getting ready to take it to $2 million a month, you know, where we can start making a lot of money. You know, we only make money when you make money. So it's that structure where the scaling is way more technical. It takes a lot more time and a lot more money to learn because you got to have the capital and cash flow to fund it, to actually experience it many, many times. We've gone through that. So it's one of those things where people might get it to a couple hundred thousand a month and they're like, oh, that's great. It's a lot of money. I've never made that much money, but it's like, there's always such a scalability potential. Whatever you're doing, even my own stuff, there's always a bigger potential. So we help people maximize that as well as remove their time and, and remove risk, you know, help them with payment processors, um, different ad account structures and things like that. So just be sure to book a, a call again. It's absolutely free. You can just touch base for five, 10, 15 minutes, whatever. Um, and let me know if you have any questions. Leave it on the comment section on this video. Make sure to drop a like. And yeah, we got a bunch of other stuff coming your way as well as that case study. So make sure to stay tuned and I will see you in the next video. Peace.